Hi everyone, Kyle here from BF Light Shows, here with you today to go over the Experience Lights Genius controller line. So we have four different controllers we're going to review and test out today. The first one is the Long Range Pixel Controller. Then we're going to get into the 16 Output Pixel Genius Controller. And then the four Output Long Range Pixel Genius Receiver and then the 16 output long range pixel genius receiver. So we'll tell you what we like, what we don't like, and whether or not you should get one. Here we go. First up, we have the long range pixel controller. This controller has 10 outputs for genius receivers. It also has two DMX ports. You have your standard network RJ45 connector over here. And then it does have an SD card available for a future use um, with a standalone mode. One thing that I don't like about the Genius controllers that I've already mentioned to the team and they're working on it is the SD card. If you lay this controller flat in a CG1500 box, it actually won't allow you access to the SD card. So you would have to unscrew the controller, lift it up, put the SD card in and then screw it back down. So, may not be a big deal, especially because that is not used right now. So you don't need to worry about it. But if you're planning on using the SD card in the future, then for now, what I would do is put the board on some type of an angle. That way you still have the clearance. I can still get to the SD card slot and nothing will be impacted. I don't have to unscrew it, just ready to go. It has an OLED screen so you can see what the IP address is and it does have a built-in test mode. So this controller is great if you need to set up a show with a lot of distance in between props. What you can do is you could put this somewhere centralized and then you could run ethernet cabling out of this controller to all of your long range controllers. So you could have a four port, say on the left side of your yard, you could have a another four port, maybe in the middle, maybe the right side of your yard is really loaded down. You could hook up a couple of the 16 output controllers and you have 32 over there. You have your 16 split between two different controllers on the left side. And now all of your controllers are centralized to where the props are located in your yard. So it makes it a little more convenient. You don't have to run super long pixel wires and things like that. You're just running ethernet and a power wire. Next up, we have our 16 output long range pixel genius receiver. This board is really simple. You have your power input on your right side and left side and this is connected to 12 volts. You have an input RJ45 connector and an output if you want to daisy chain them. And these have the new Genius Controller connectors on them that allow you to basically push in with a screwdriver these little pins here. And you're gonna slide in your pigtail and then you're gonna let go of the spring and it is going to hold those wires nice and firm. So you don't have to worry about any connectors and screws having to screw in the connector and then click it in. These are just going to push in and then you can basically forget about it. This board here essentially acts as four different four output long range pixel genius receivers. So you have receiver one, two, three, and four. You could either have them running ports six, 17 through 21, 22, 24, and etc or you could run them as smart receivers where they could be in A, B, C, and D mode. One thing that's nice about the Genius line of Pixel controllers is they will automatically recognize where they're at in line. So you don't have to worry about dip switches or anything like that, termination switches. They are just going to automatically configure themselves and be ready to go. Next up, I have two of the four output long range Pixel Genius receivers. I have these running in dumb mode. So I have the output from ports 17 through 23 connected and then ports 24 through 27 over here. You can run these together if you want to use them in smart mode. And there is no SD card or anything that you have to worry about for these. They are 
pretty simple. They are going to plug in just like the 16 output long range. They do have a selector on them that you can utilize if you want to, but just like the 16 output, it will auto configure itself. So it knows whether it is A, B, C, D, etc. So one issue I'd like to point out that I had with these, it was my fault, my mistake, but since I didn't know it, I'll make sure that I should pass this along. So I had these configured like this. They are working, you can see the snowflakes to the side of me are working correctly. But if I disconnect this and I use the input from the first smart receiver and I connect to the output and then to the input of the other one, these are now running in smart mode, but they are configured in dumb mode. So you can see the flake next to me is no longer doing what it's supposed to be doing. My matrix behind me in this part is still doing what it's supposed to be doing. So the first output is not affected. But the second one on the second board is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So just be aware if you are trying to run these in dumb mode, then you need to run two Ethernet wires to each of them. They cannot be daisy chained. If you want to daisy chain them, just make sure you put them in smart mode and you'll be all set. Next up, we have our 16 output Pixel Genius controller. This controller is your standard controller that will have all of your 16 outputs locally. It does have capability of using these two ports here to run long range receivers. It also has two DMX ports built in and then your standard ethernet jack for your network. It has your OLED screen. So when you connect your ethernet wire, it's going to show you your IP address on the screen. So you can see right here, mine is dot 61. It has a test mode button built in and it has the same SD card slot that I mentioned about the long range controller. And again, this is something that I brought to their attention. They are going to work on a fix for a future design. This also uses the new style connector. We'll get into it a little bit more in a minute on how this works. I'll actually give you a demonstration. And then you also have your power supply inputs on your right and left side. You can run this board off five volts or 12 volts. Experience Lights markets these as 12 volt boards. They will not provide support if you want to run five volt, but they are capable of running five volt. All right, so now it's time for a quick demo on how these new connectors work. Before I get into that, I wanna call out one last thing. So these connectors are three separate pieces of plastic as opposed to just one solid piece. So you may notice that while you're putting these together, you may end up seeing where there is a gap like right here. That is because they are separate pieces of plastic, but they will just push back together. So you don't need to worry about it. They're not going to break. They're not cracked or anything like that. And then to put the wires in it, you're going to take a small flathead and you are going to push down on the pin here and you are going to slide the wire in. Make sure that your wire is cut and not tinned and it's going to go on a 45 degree angle in. So you start with your ground, data is in the middle, and power is on the right side. There's a little groove on the top of the connector. Go ahead and you can slide in your wire. And then once you're done, it will be nice and snug. Go ahead and you can just repeat the process. and you're good to go. Also with these boards, the Genius line of boards, they use this new auto resetting fuse. So if you were to create a short or have a problem, the circuit will still get tripped, but you don't have to actually pull anything off and replace it. Just disconnect it and reconnect it and you will be all set. So last up, I'm gonna show you guys the user interface on the computer and we'll go over final thoughts. So if you load up the user interface from your phone, you'll notice that the output tab is missing. That is by design because it is not optimized for mobile. 
So you can see it's just not here. If you are in your front yard or in the field somewhere, just be aware you won't be able to access the outputs from your phone. You'll need a laptop. So we'll jump over to the computer and you'll be able to see the outputs tab and then we'll wrap this up. Once you type in the IP address of the controller shown on the OLED screen, you'll be brought to a menu that looks like this. From here, you can download a configuration file or upload one if you have multiple controllers or need to make some changes and you want to save the files. You have your input, output, current monitoring network, and you can update the board from here. Your input will allow you to select the operating mode, whether or not you want to use DDP, E131, or ArtNet. Your output will show you all of your outputs. You have the option to set your channels, your RGB direction, the number of pixels connected. You can set your channels, null pixels, the direction if you want it to be reversed, your brightness, your gamma. You see here you have outputs 1 through 16, and then 17 through 20, 21 through 24, and your two DMX options. You can also download this quick start beta. This is basically a configuration already configured inside Exploits that will allow you to have a sequence and the whole controller all set up, ready to go, so you can see exactly how to do it. Pretty cool feature. Um, I use that to first set up the board and kind of figure everything out. You also have test mode over here, and they have a couple of new test modes built into their board that utilize WLED, so you can add some sparkles and you can add some other cool things that some of the other controllers don't have. You can also come over to current monitoring. This will read the amount of current from the controller and estimate how many pixels are being used and what the draw of those are. If you are using 5 volt with power injection, this feature will not work. That is one of the reasons Experience Lights will not provide support for 5 volt pixels. So just be aware if you're using 5 volt or doing power injection, you aren't going to be able to get accurate counts or measurements from this. You can come over to network over here. You can set whether or not you want to use a static IP or if you want to use DHCP. And then lastly, you have your update tab. Lee and David have a great video on how to update this controller. So if you want to know how to update it, follow that video. But this is the general web interface for the Genius Pixel line of controllers. So we use these controllers to power our float in the Santa Land Parade in 2022. And we are powering up a few different props, the EFL Snowman, Gilbert Engineering Grinch, North Pole Sign, the NSR Trees. In this box, you can see we're using the 16 port controller running off of 12 volts. And in this box, we have the two four port that are running off five volts. That float was a lot of fun to build. It was great to be in our city parade. I want to thank David and Lee for getting me the Experience Lights controllers to be able to pull it off. If you're in the market for a controller, I definitely recommend checking out the Experience Lights brand. They are full controllers. They are not hats or capes, so you don't have to worry about FPP licensing or setting any of that up, but they are compatible with FPP if you want to use it. If your show is more spread out, then I would use the long range and the receivers. One thing that's really sweet about the receivers is they are the only brand that are interchangeable and will also work in smart mode. So you can use a Culp, you can use Falcon, Wally's, it really doesn't matter. And you're still able to keep the Experience Lights Genius receivers in smart mode. If your show is more condensed into a small area, then I would go with the 16 output controller. Again, I want to thank David and Lee for sending me this gear to test out and review. If you guys have any questions, feel free to send me a message or message the Experience Lights team. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so so you can see all our new videos. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.